We would be honored if you would join us. Hey Star Wars fans and action figure collectors, welcome back to another episode of Clone Wars Thursday Throwback. We're obviously looking at Darth Maul from his appearance in predominantly sort of season 4 and 5, um, once he sort of got recovered. Um, this is one of my favourite figures of the line, um, just for the sake of, I don't know, it, it holds a lot of memories for that for that era of when Clone Wars was airing. Um, we had that sort of teaser at the end of season three, I think, with Savage Press learning about his brother and the survival of Darth Maul. And I know a lot of people give that whole story about a little bit of slack for Darth Maul being able to come back after being cut in half. But we had seen it before in some comics, um, some infinite comics, which was almost like a what if. So we knew it was, it was possible and... I don't know, Darth Maul from that sort of story eventually became probably one of the, you know, a very rich, um, a very rich character um, all the way through, obviously, the Clone Wars and Rebels and, you know, stories yet to be told. So he was originally released in a three pack with Savage Press, Armored, and a, a Night Sister, which. Wasn't technically Mother Talzin, but it was pretty darn close. Um, it was, I think, it was probably as close as they were going to get to doing a proper Mother Talzin at the time. Um, it was a great, great figure of a Night Sister. Um, but yeah, it was sort of, you know, very sort of fits in now with the with the Night Night Mothers sort of coming into live action lore with the Soka. But. Um, yeah, so he was originally released in a three-pack, and then he was released single-carded on one of the green uh, Yoda card backs, which was sort of meant to come out um, for the Attack of the Clones uh, 3D release. Um, that line that line was short-lived and didn't make it very far around the world, did make it down here to Australia, um, and those cards are sort of you know, quite sought after and quite hefty price now. But it was still cool to have this guy released. Um, I got him in the three pack and this is where they sort of, sort of towards that late end of the Clone Wars 2012, um, when they released Phantom Menace in 3D, they sort of changed the cards a little bit. So a lot more collectible with the sort of full art on the, on the battle game card here. Nice image of, of Maul there. And on the back, it has all his abilities and stuff. And then still having the ability to... Uh, maybe not, I don't know. I don't know how that worked after that. Because it doesn't really line up. I thought it still did, but yeah. I guess you just kind of go with it, don't you? <laughs> So there's the uh, there's the card. We'll put that aside. We'll take a look at the figure. So yeah, this is like I said, still a really really nice figure. Um, missed out on a couple of little articulation spots, such as the wrists, um, for the most part. You know, I'd love to see an updated version of this come into what like, the vintage collection. In a live action interpretation, or or the black series, you know, I think that'd be fantastic as well. You know, extra articulation, all those details that come to a figure with the live action sort of interpretation. But you know, as far as this one goes, he looks absolutely awesome. It did come with his double bladed lightsaber. Um, I did him the service of just giving him the half and I sort of melted down the end so it looked like it had been cut in half and he'd been handed back his his uh, sheared in half blade. Because, yeah, he only uses the, uh, the single blade until later in the Clone Wars at the Siege of Mandalore. But I love the uh, love the sort of the detailing on the legs, like the the sort of weathering 
You know, these were made out of scrapped parts of super battle droids. Thanks to the the dark magic of Mother Talzin being able to re reconstruct his legs out of broken down super battle droids from General Grievous' slaughter of of Dathomir. Yeah, just that sort of light, light sort of grey, grey wash over the, over the edges of the, of the metal parts on the surfaces. Looks really good. This sort of abdomen piece there, where he's all sort of knitted in, stitched together. Now I'd be pretty angry too if I was cut off from the waist down. Some important bodily functions are required in that half of the body. <laughs> yeah, I sort of did that wash on the uh, arm gauntlets as well, the gloves and gauntlets. But then just a, a really nice, crisp paint job on the head and, and torso with those black lines, the tattoos over the skin. Then around on the back. And of course, I'm glad they went with this design with the with the legs because it's very reminiscent of this design, which is the one I was speaking about too from the Infinites comics or Infinities or whatever it is. Um, yeah, this was one that came in a two pack with Owen Owen Lars. It was a it was one of the first exclusives. As part of the vintage collection. I don't think it was counted as part of the vintage collection. It might have been late, late legacy collection by that point. Yeah, you can sort of see where those design elements come in and compare. Yeah, that's a it's a pretty wild looking looking Darth Maul. I love the horns and of course they carried through that sort of elongated horn design into Darth Maul when he was found on Lotho Minor in the trash planet with the spider body, which is another figure that I think most of us would love to have. But yeah, that's Again, both very, very cool, cool figures. Yeah, no, just a lot, just a lot of good memories about that time of the Clone Wars, watching it all unravel, and you know the end of season, end of season teasers and cliffhangers. And it's like, whoa, Darth Maul's coming back. Even those couple of episodes were um, released in cinemas. There was a few episodes released in cinemas back then. And uh, Darth Maul Returns got its own sort of DVD release. It's not one I own. I'd love to get a hold of it. But yeah, this is uh, this is one I've been wanting to wanting to share for a little while. And I have reviewed this one in the past. If I uh, manage to find the video link to it, I'll put it at the end of the video, right at the very end. I'm trying my hardest to, you know, if I can track down those original reviews I did 10 plus years ago, I will, I will endeavor to put them in so you can see what younger me looks like and how much I've changed over the years. It's mostly just hair loss, but that's all right. I've got about as much hair as Darth Maul does these days. But yeah, I appreciate you watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. I will eventually get around to doing both of the Savage figures. Two Savage Press figures. Which were fantastic. But yeah, I just this is one that I've really wanted to talk about again and, you know, sort of reminisce about that that era in Clone Wars in 2010, 2011, 12.
amazing times. All right, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. May the force be with you always.